Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 97. Please turn to it. Page number 97 and today is our lesson number 43. Today we will deal with the notion of a bar graph. Pretty straightforward simple concept. A bar graph is what we are looking at on page number 97. Problem number 2. We have to first reproduce the bar graph that you see there on the book there. I'm going to, have to reproduce here so that we can work with it. So be patient. It goes all the way from 2 to 16. So here we go, 2 to 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. In year, two, year 2000, we are told that we have two observations here for A and B, 6 and 8. 6 and 8. That's year 2000. That's year 2000. In 2001, we have observations of, looks like 10 and 16. 10 and 16. Ten and sixteen is going to be up here. And sixteen. Two thousand and one. Ten and sixteen. This one was six and eight. I need to squeeze in two more years, so I to I cannot be so liberal with this with my usage of this space. In 2002, we have 12 and 9. Let's pick up 12 and 9. 12 and 9. 9 is going to be somewhere between 8 and 10, obviously. Twelve and nine. And finally we have eight and sixteen. Eight. Same height as this one. And 16. That's it. That's, those are the graphs there. So here is your 2002 and here is your 2003. Let's get going. The very first question is asking us Question number two is what we're looking at. It says the graph above shows the performance of stock A and stock B. So stock A, this one is your stock A, and the one with the line across is our stock B. It says the graph above shows the performance of stock A and stock B from 2000 to 2003, as we see here. In what year were these earnings for stock A the greatest? Well, let's take a look at it. The earnings, earnings, for A was greatest in year, let's see which year, stock A. Now listen, the only reason why you would get a question like this wrong in the exam is the haste. Don't do it hastily, don't do it in a cursory manner, take your time, because these are gifts, it's a very straightforward question, these are gifts. As I said, and, and yet sometimes we get them wrong because uh, we are in a hurry. This is not the place to be in a hurry. Take your time. It's one thing to get a question wrong that is very difficult. I don't. I, of course, I get upset when I get a question wrong, but I don't get as much upset if I get a very difficult, very, very, very challenging question wrong. I'm upset, but I can live with it. But I'm, I'm, I'm very. Well, I was about to say one word, but I wasn't going to say it now. Uh, I'm very. I get uh, very upset when I get something very simple, simple, and straightforward wrong only because I wasn't paying attention. Don't do that. So, in which year, in which year was the earning for A greatest? Just make sure we're looking for A, this graph. So this is 6, 10, 12, and 8. Very good. 12 is the answer there. 
12 is it is greatest in 2002. So don't don't mix up your A and B. Do you understand? In 2003, in question number three, it says, "How much more did the stock B earn than stock A in 2003?" Well, in 2003, we've done with this part. In 2003, B earned more than A. Let's find out, shall we? In 2003 is what we're looking at. 2003 is way over there. A earned 8,000 and B earned 16,000 right here. 8 and 16. So the difference is $8,000. In 2003, B earned $8,000 more than did A. That's all. Finally, question number four. Question number four is asking us, in what year did the earnings for stock A exceeded its earnings for stock B? In what year A exceeded B? A exceeded B in year, well, let's find out. A exceeded B. So we want this, this guy open by, this is six and this is eight. Here A is less than that. Obviously here is 10 and 16. There you go. 12 and 9 in 2002. In 2002, A exceeded B. A exceeded B, B because in 2002, A is 12 and B is 9. That also happens to be the year where the earning for A was the greatest. That was it. So that was question number, uh, question, question number 2, 3 and 4. For 5 and 6, we have to plot on the graph, on the bar graph. I'll get off your way. I'll get out of your way and just give me one second and we'll do the next one. That's it, we have to draw a different bar graph now to do 5 and 6. Five and six. On the bar graph. Which looks at the water turnout in city A. Alright. And it goes all the way from it goes all the way from 10 to uh, rather 4 to 4 to through 24. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. There you go. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. In 1999, we have 8,000. In 2000, we have 20. In 2001, we have 16. In 2002, we have 24. And finally, for 2003, we are told that the water turnout was you have to look very carefully, it is 18, it falls between 16 and 20, it is 18, between 16 and 20 is 18. This is the part I'm, I'm talking about, this is what they are hoping that you will do, they are hoping that you will not pay very close attention and you will misread this thing. This last one that we just drew, 2003, is neither 16 nor 20, it falls in between, it is 18. And I, I bet you there is going to be a question about that particular one because that's the one probably a lot of people are going to miss in their haste. As I said, do not do this problem cursorily. Do you understand? You must take your time. Don't do them in, don't do them in cursory manner. So let's let's answer the question. Let's answer the question. Well, listen. Before we answer the question, why don't we take, get rid of this? Uh, take care of this word that I've been using. The word is cursory. To do something in a cursory manner means to do something in haste. To do something, to do something in haste. And the adverb for cursory would be you take your y, you take your y, 
and turn it into an I and then LY. And you have to slow down when you are pronouncing it, otherwise it will not come out right. You have to take your time. It's pronounced cursorily. You mustn't do this problem cursorily. You mustn't do them hastily. You will get it wrong. Or rather you will get them wrong. Let's get going. Enough of the talk. Number five. Did we ever learn this word cursorily? Cursory? I bet you we did. I have my vocab thing here and it just... I'm looking at here for some reason. It's a, just give me one second here. Oh, where do you know? Day 22. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in vocabulary words, day 22, along with my name, it will pop right up. And watch the video and you will learn that word and perhaps some other good words, useful words. How helpful you will find this video, of course, depends on, on your level of vocabulary. Number five. The graph shows above the number of people in city A who voted during during the years 1999 to 2003. As we already know, it shows the voter turnout during those years from 99 to 2003. We are told the city has eligible voter population of 80,000. 80,000 is the total. Eligible voters. What percentage of the eligible voter voted in 1999? All right, in 1999, in 1999, we look at the graph here. 1999, oh, 8,000 here. In 1999, eight out of 80 voted. Well, that's very straightforward. Eight out of 80 is 10 percent. Eight out of 80 is same as one out of 10, which is 10 percent. This is this is too simple. This is ridiculous. Only 10% of only 10% of the eligible voter bothered to vote. This is what I call voter voters apathy. Number six. In number six, according to graph above, what was the what was the decrease in water from 2002 to 2006? There you go. I told you there is going to be something about 2003 because 2003 is the odd guy out. It, it falls neither at 16 nor at 20, it falls at 18. 2003 is 18. And 2002 is 24. So they are asking us for the percentage change from 2002 to 2003. Let me start from fresh because this is too simple. There is no need to, for, there is no need for us to leave it on the blackboard. I need the room. So in 2006, so they're looking for decrease. Are they looking for decrease in the in the water or percentage decrease? What was the decrease in what? What was the decrease in what waters from 2002 to 2003? Or they're just looking for decrease. The decrease is six. In 2002, in 2002, it was 24,000, and in 2003, it was 18,000. And the, uh, the decrease is 6,000. 6,000, not 8,000 or 4,000. The reading for 2003 is not 16 or 8, uh, 20, it is 18. So therefore, it goes from 24 to 18, a decrease of 6. Now, if they had phrased the question a little bit differently, and instead of saying, what was, the, what was the decrease in the number of voters from 2000 and 2002 to 2003? If they had asked us, instead, if they had asked us, what was, what was the percentage decrease from 2002 to 2003? Now this is a different question. This is a different question. Here we have to do the formula for percentage change, which we learned long time ago. Uh, where can we do that? I, I used up all the room here. Percentage change is equal to the change over the old number times 100. I'm going to do it very quickly, and then I'm going to tell you what pair. We are done with this part. The decrease was 6. The decrease, the decrease from 20 from 2002 to 2003 was from 24,000 to 18,000 decrease is 6. We, we're done with it. I'm going to make a note here as to when we learn this percentage change formula. 
this formula that I just threw at you, we learned a long time ago, percentage change formula. We learned percentage change formula on day on day 14. On day 14. So if you if you do not know where this formula came from, it did not fall from the sky. I don't have a, I don't have a luxury of going through this thing again. Watch day 14 and you will talk about it. So here, the change change is always defined as new minus the old. The new number is 18. The old number was 24. Therefore, the change is negative six. The change of negative six. The negative six tells us the negative negative tells us that the percentage decrease, which of course we knew it because it goes from 24 to 18. And we divide it by the original number, which was 24, times 100. The change is negative 6 over 24 times 100. And 6 over 24 is 1 quarter. So it's negative 1 quarter times 100. And of course, 1 quarter is 0.25 times 100. It turns out to be negative 25%. Negative 25%. The water turned out from 2002 to 2003 dropped by 25%. And of course, in all reality, if you think about it, we don't have to do all this work and we don't have to make it so academic. We just use our common sense and it tells us that going from, from, from 24 to 18, 24 to 18, that's a drop of 6. 24 to 18, that's a drop of 6. And 6 is 1 quarter of 24. 6 is a quarter of 24 because 6 fours are 24. So a drop of quarter is a drop, drop of 25%. If you drop some number by, by quarter or by, by the quarter of the amount, it's a drop of 25%. I will see you tomorrow when we'll do the problem that you see on page number 98. Alright, bye now.